Yeah, I reckon all this is going to be demolished, you know. Right, anyway, to Cambridge. Hello there, how are you doing? And welcome to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video. Uh, with me Tom, I'm coming to you from my hotel room about 10 miles outside of Cambridge as I'm here exhibiting at the uh, Centre for Computer History's Retro Computer Festival. I nearly forgot the name then. I'm rather tired, it's about 8.30 in the morning so um, we've already done a full day yesterday and so this is the uh, Sunday, the final day. Um, so I've loads of great stuff I want to show you so I um, really hope you enjoyed the video. Also I'll, um, I'll show you outside because um, the service station I'm on, I'm staying in a sort of cheapish hotel on a service station, again 10 miles out of Cambridge on the A14 but outside it's just abandoned, it's it's ridiculous so I'll show you that when I, when I check out There you go, so you think I'm joking, that's an abandoned BP petrol station and there's an abandoned Burger King and there's the hotel but this whole site is like super grotty. Yeah, somewhere that wasn't super grotty, however, was the Centre for Computer History in Cambridge, England, and this is where the retro computing festival was being held. So basically, people came from all over the country, including myself. You bought your own kit, you exhibit it in the museum. This is inside the main hall, uh, so you can see a mixture of the museum's own content and the special content brought in the event. And this is the, or what was, the 80s classroom. That's my two machines, BBC Micro, as you can see in the foreground. This usually has a set up classroom of BBC Micros, however, it's been cleared for today's show. So these are the two BBC Micros I bought. It's a Master 128 and a BBC Micro Model B. So these machines are 35 years old. This is my uh, kit machine. This is a Risco S uh, Rusty Pi powered kit Micro 1 computer that you can buy. And another look at the two BBC Micros I bought. So we're running with a Raspi Code Pro on the BBC Master. That's the one with the large keyboard. And we have a MMC on the other machine. At the back of the air room, these were the computers uh, that were actually part of the museum's collection that we're running. Uh, here we have a research machine's 380Z. Never seen one of these. One of the very first uh, British education computers. Uh, ran a Z80 process, 4 megahertz Z80 processor. Uh, this was an RM Nimbus. This replaced the previous machine um, as a basically an IBM clone. And this was an Acorn Archimedes. This was the rival for the Nimbus during the sort of mid to late 80s. One of the very first machines to use the ARM chipset. So here I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> get it working again. Risco S operating system. And here we have a BBC Master 128 connected to a Doomsday device. This was a laser disk uh, drive, and there was quite an interesting exhibit here. Just look at this the disk rot or bit rot of an original laser disk. I don't think that was a Doomsday uh, drive. Here we have uh, these are Acorn servers. These are running with the Econet, Econet, Econet network, I think it was. Um, I'm not sure what that label's about, but they're making a noise. You can hear the noise they're making. And these are all the uh, the cub monitors, BBC monitors that are all stacked up that should usually be set up the classroom and they're just literally stacked everywhere. This is actually underneath the desks at the far um, back of the room. You can just see piles and piles of them. Okay, never seen these in the country before. These are Sega PCs and Sega 8-bit computer systems. So the one you're looking at is compatible with the uh, Sega Mega Drives that's running Sonic. And this is the, what well you can see there, SC3000 personal computer 8-bit machine. I'm guessing compatible with the uh, master system. And then this funny thing that I think is either Saturn or uh, Dreamcast compatible. Again, never seen them before. Okay, these are um, Amstrad machines. And then there was this set up for um, using a, a PC to copy disks and around the corner we've got uh, other Amstrad compatible Sinclair clones if you like. Uh, so yeah these are Amstrad PCs, I think these were Intel based if I'm right. Don't know a lot about them. Anyway moving into the foyer, we've got uh, arcade machines. 
and this uh, giant uh, sort of processor which shows all the stages of a, a processor running the LEDs in it kind of upset the camera so that's why this footage is a bit blurry but I decided I've got to include it because this thing was seriously cool so there you are you can sort of track if you like the entire data bus of a uh, processor and then hiding in the top corner you blink and you miss them how many Mac classics or mini Macs do you need? Okay, we're now in the other hall, and here's the sort of personal computer lineup. So we've got things like uh, Z80, Z81 there. Uh, various other systems. We've got a Commodore 64, which will work, and you could all play on these. Uh, ZX Spectrum, Dragon 32, the Welsh computer, Acorn Electron. And then we've got it, so there's an Amstrad, another Amstrad. And the later Commodore machine, I forget the name of Commodore, not 64, I forget yes. the name. Yes. And here's the PC clones, so including the original IBM PC there. And the Commodore PET, all known as DCBM. And then we have some uh, Indy and Sun Microsystems machines. Ah, oh, this was a surprise, an original Altair 8800 computer. I think that is actually an original unit. Again, didn't know anywhere in the country. Now the 70s office. Have a look inside, don't mind if I do. This was a bit weird. So you've got all the sort of modems and type terminals. I think there's a CBM or Commodore PET disk drive there. Five and a quarter inch discs. More terminals. I'm not entirely sure what that is. It's some kind of teletype terminal. And then we've got uh, a very uh, posh BBC announcer. Uh, recording from BBC One. A sharp Japanese portable tele. Okay, very sort of. Is that 70s or 80s? Anyway. Uh, the Apple range. So we've got the next cube there. The uh, terrible failure that was the Apple III microcomputer and one of the early 98 coloured iMacs. Here we have a Apple I replica. Now this was quite cool, built into a briefcase. Uh, the original 1984 Mac, Mac 128K, and an Apple II, that's an earlier Apple II. Uh, twin separate twin disk drives and here we have a uh, Apple Lisa again I've only ever seen one of these once but this one you could actually use and play this was uh, owned by a chap who called himself Binary Dinosaurs and uh, it's a really cool time well, I'll put a link for his uh, stuff in below but you can see the Mac Macbox Odyssey report as well next to it so uh, but yeah it worked really well the Lisa I don't know what I'm doing I'll try to open calculator at this point and yeah the machine was um, slow so it is. and also this is from binary dinosaurs this is a um, next step system uh, again so predecessor to what would become mac os 10. okay let's look at some gaming so we have lots of these sort of arcade game cabinets uh the video gaming side itself in this museum is seriously cool and just look at the console setup there so again, another Magnavox Odyssey, again, seeing two in one day is not bad going, especially here in the UK. We have a uh, Pong system. The Atari 20, 2600, is it? Yeah, I think so. It's Clico, is that Clico Vision? One of those is a Clico. Uh, then we have, the, obviously, the NES. And we have uh, Sega Master System. There's quite a nice little collection there. The Sega, I believe the Sega Computer Mas Video Game Computer System and the Famicom, the Japanese Famicom. Both Japanese machines. Atari Jaguar, uh, less said about that the better. And there we have a, a Mega Drive or Genesis, for everyone watching the States, with all the add-ons. And that's running uh, Sonic 2, I think it was. Yes, Sonic 2 running quite nicely on that. And again, you could go off and play in these systems. Okay, nice little exhibit here. So, uh, guess the character. And he had these tiles you could physically use, 
real life pixel art. PlayStation exhibit, so everything from the original PS1, PS2, including some prototype PS2, all the way down to 3 and obviously 4 at the bottom, so it's quite nice to see. And finally, we'll end here with uh, literally a pile of rubbish. These were the cartridges recovered from the uh, Atari, the infamous Atari dump site, the ET games. These are actually bought back. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that very brief look. Please remember to subscribe, like the video, and join us next time here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.